Okay, so we're going to take a look today at using GL Studio to create an instrument cluster for automotive. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to actually start in Visual Studio. Uh, you have to remember that GL Studio is a code generator, uh, and so we need a compiler in order to generate the code that comes out. So here I'm going to choose GL Studio Application Wizard, and we're going to make a speedometer. And uh, you notice what it does here is it gives me the GL Studio design file name and the root name and a place to generate the source. Now the root name actually gives me uh, the name of the header file, the source file, the instance name, class name, and even the GL Studio design file name. Now you notice here that it creates a solution, a project, and a workspace, and even gives us a sample GL Studio design. Now this uh, is uh, a quick look at the GL Studio editor. You'll notice inside here is where we create our objects uh, in 2D uh, and in 3D, actually. And you can uh, visualize that from whatever angle and interact with that from whatever angle. Uh, now the key here is that if I save and generate my code, uh, we can come to the compiler and go ahead and build an application right away. And now what this is showing you is that we've got a great skeleton for starting out right away to create a GL Studio standalone application. So let's go back to the editor here. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and start from a blank screen. Uh, so we're going to create a brand new application here. And let's go ahead and just create a rectangle from one corner to the other. And you notice when I select the objects, it gives me a list of all the different OpenGL properties I can change. You can view them by category or class. Uh, I prefer to view them by class. Here I'm going to go ahead and grab a texture. Uh, now you'll notice these are just simple PNG files, uh, but we, uh, we can support just about any texture file format. Uh, but here I can go ahead and just apply that directly to my object. Uh, that you can again see in whatever angle or format that you need to. Uh, and so let's create a quick uh, second object here and this one's going to be for our needle. Um, I'm going to turn off our grid space here and let's go grab a new texture that has all of the different texture elements on it. Now you'll notice here we also have a texture adjustment that if you're in texture mode you can see a really nice uh, visual outlay of the objects and where they sit. So here let's go ahead and make that a little bit larger and maybe not quite that large. There we go. And so now we can place that wherever we need it to be on the texture and from here uh, I am going to zoom in and get that centered right where I want it to be on my gauge. So now you notice that every object here has a rotation point and we can put that wherever we want. In this case we want it to be centered right on our gauge. So as we rotate our object, the object rotates about the center of the gauge. So now um, last piece we're going to do here is let's go ahead and tidy this up and get rid of those uh, outlines so I can save and generate my code. Uh, come back to the compiler, build my application, and run it real quick. And you can see that uh, we're essentially done with the first of four phases here. So this is our visual look and feel. This is what we want to create. The next part becomes the uh, innate behavior for that needle to be able to go from 0 to 160. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that with phase 2. So you'll notice here that we've got the ability to take all of our tabs, move them around, place things wherever we want, resize different tabs and locations. I have a favorite layout that I like to use for coding, uh, and I'm going to show that one to you here. So let's go in and create a few class properties. Now what a class property does for you is it gives you a member variable, set method, and a get method. Uh, and if you don't want the overhead of generating some of these things in, you can turn those off and it won't be generated. Uh, or you can select public, private, or protected right here, or even through your preferences, uh, you can make them automated. Uh, so in this case, what we want to do first is uh, I'm going to create a Boolean type for testing. And we'll initialize that at true. Uh, and then I'm going to create another one for type float for 
speed and we'll initialize that at zero and so the first thing I want to do uh, is I actually want to go and give these objects names so uh, here's my needle uh, and here's my panel now these names are actually the NCC C++ variable names these are the identifier names so if I tried to come in here and give it a name with a space it's gonna come back and tell me that's not a valid C++ identifier and so this is doing some base level checking as you're doing your development here as well which is very important so the first thing we're gonna do in here is uh, we're gonna go to our speed uh, and we are going to first set the speed member variable equal to the value being sent in and then we want to create an angle uh, based on 240 degrees of rotation for 160 units now you'll notice if I come in to here in our visual window you can see at the very bottom the angle uh, in degrees and so that's where we get that 240 uh, 240 degrees from and then we also have a needle with the dynamic rotation based on that angle uh, in the z-axis now say you're not at all familiar with GL studio and you say well I want to be able to find all the API's that are associated with this object type well you notice that if you use a pointer after an existing object name it will auto populate a list and not only that but as you type it will narrow that list down for you so we're going to use this dynamic rotate uh, now the next piece is um, let's go ahead and connect a little bit of test data to it so before we do that let's save and generate our code come back in and rebuild our application and so at this point we're actually done with the second phase we now have given this object the innate behavior to move the needle from 0 to 160 uh, based on the 360 degrees or, or 240 degrees of rotation so in this case uh, let's go back and now add a little bit of data so we can visualize that and see that working live in the editor so the first thing I want to do is come into my calculate when I go to my calculate the, whatever I put in here happens every frame so this is a good place for me to say that if testing is true which we know it is because we set it that way then I'm gonna make a call to speed and I'm gonna send some data value to it what I'm gonna do here is ramp a float based on system time from 0 to 160 degree now that ramp float method lives in uh, lives in a helper file that we have called the GLS util file so let's go ahead and save and generate that code and then we'll come back in here build our application and we are now done with the third part we are now sending some test data between 0 to 160 so this is creating what we call an RSO a reusable software object so the next piece becomes well now that I've created my RSO how do I use that in a higher level parent design right so the first thing we're gonna do in here is we're gonna come in and notice in our generation type we're generating a standalone application what we really want to do next is generate component application uh, and then we can come in and uh, rebuild the component as a DLL there's actually a number of different things that we can do with that but we uh, the first thing we're going to do is show you how to use this as a DLL okay so now that we have our DLL uh, I'm gonna go back to my geometry layout and let's just create a new blank design and the first thing we're gonna do in here is go and grab our uh, DLL which is inside here in the automotive speedometer and there it is so notice this is our speedometer class uh, it's showing this object live in the editor uh, if we need to have multiple instances of this easy enough to just go ahead and duplicate that however many times we need uh, and now what's interesting is uh, if we select one of these objects notice we can see all of the initial attributes so there's our testing and our speed uh, that we set up so let's go ahead and turn testing off and now 
we can come in here and start to visually test different values on our speedometer. So that's one way to use uh, the component code. Now another way is if you wanted to statically compile that in line. So instead of inserting the DLL, uh, you can now go and directly insert the GL Studio design as well. Uh, in this case, you get the exact same effect. The only difference now is that uh, it's, it's static. And so uh, if we go and now say you need to, uh, during your prototyping phase, you need to make a change to that design. You can just come inside here, click on the little eyeglass, and that opens up your uh, initial design. Now say we wanted to do something like, uh, I don't know, maybe add a quick uh, animated schematic that goes around here. Uh, so what we're going to do is take that. Uh, we're going to add a little inter uh, uh, a little bit of an interconnect texture. Uh, and then we're also going to add a different flow texture here. We'll go with this blue one. And so let's make this a little larger so we can actually see what we're building a little bit more effectively. And so you notice uh, that right away we're able to visualize the flow of that data. Uh, you can add vertices to this if you want to. Uh, you can even go in and make changes to this object so that at real time uh, you could turn on different error functions uh, or flow functions or flow speed rate. Uh, the important piece to note about this, though, is as you go to these uh, smaller subcomponents that you create, if you save those off, it bubbles up to all the use cases of that component. So this is kind of showing not only that GL Studio is an object-oriented uh, design tool as far as generating C++ code, but it also shows that object-oriented design hierarchy as well. And so that's the GL Studio design file format and uh, how to use GL Studio to create some instrumentation for automotive. Thank you.